Ho ho hello. Recently I asked you whether to make Space Invaders or Galaga, and most people on YouTube chose Galaga. But I also asked the same question on my Discord server. Yes, we now have our own Discord server with over 100 members, so be sure to join us. Link in the description. Anyway, most people on Discord voted for Space Invaders. And at this moment I was like, what do I do? But after counting the votes, it was clear that Space Invaders had clearly won. So today we're making Space Invaders. Let's go. Can you guess what we're gonna do first? An empty window? Exactly! And here it is. Now let's draw the player. As always we won't focus on the graphics for now so I drew this ugly looking spaceship. Then I made a class for the player which will load the image and draw it on the screen. And look at that, it's not working. It turns out we need to set the texture after we load the image. And now it works. Now let's add movement for the player. This formula will return 1 when we press the right button, minus 1 when we press the left button, and 0 when we don't press any of them. Then we're gonna use the clamp function to make sure the player doesn't go beyond the screen. Let's see. Mm-hmm. It's not moving. Let's try using a different movement code. Okay, it should work. What the hell? Why it's not... Oh. I forgot to call the function. That was so stupid. Now we're gonna make the player shoot bullets. I made a struct which will store the coordinates of the bullet. Once the player presses the Z button, we're gonna add one bullet to our vector of bullets. And we're gonna draw the bullets using the for loop. Let's see. Yeah, I forgot to move them. We just need to add this piece of code. There we go. Now it may seem like it's working fine, but let me show you something. Here we're displaying the size of our bullets vector. If we start shooting bullets, it'll increase drastically. As you can see, it already has more than 100 bullets. So if we keep shooting bullets, our game will start to lag and eat up huge chunks of memory. We can't let that happen. So we need to delete the bullets that are outside the screen. And for that we're gonna use the remove if function. Let's say this is our vector and we need to remove all the odd integers. First we'll create a function that checks to see if the number is odd. Then we're gonna iterate through our vector and check each number with our function. Once the function returns true, we're gonna delete that number and replace it with the number for which the function returns false. After removing the elements, the function will return a pointer that points to the new end of our vector. Notice that we didn't change its size. Then we're gonna erase all the elements starting from that pointer to the end of the vector. By the way, this is called a lambda. We use it when we wanna make a function on the spot. I'm a professional, you know. Okay, we prevented a huge memory leak. Now let's add reloading. The player now has a reload timer. Once we shoot a bullet, we're gonna reset that timer. And we won't be able to shoot until it reaches zero. Pew! 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 Now that we've added shooting, let's add something to shoot at. In our case, it's gonna be this little fella. I made a new class for the enemies. For now, we're just gonna draw the sprite on the screen. Alright, now let's move it. The enemies will move in one direction until they reach the edge of the screen. Once they reach it, they'll move down and change their direction. The enemy's update function will return 1 when it reaches the edge. And here we're changing its direction and moving it down. Let's have a look. Okay, it's working. Now let's add more enemies. Uh huh. For some reason, the texture class doesn't work well with vectors. So I decided to put the enemy texture outside of the enemy class. Let's see. It works, but let's make the enemy slower. We're gonna do the same thing we did with reloading. Once the move timer reaches zero, we're gonna reset it and move the enemies. Now that looks a lot better. Okay, it's time we add killing. The enemies now have a new function that checks to see if they've been hit by a bullet. And if so, they'll die and delete that bullet. And here we're deleting the dead enemies. Let's see. Why can't things just work on the first try? After some time I realized what was wrong. Here we're getting the vector of bullets from our player. But the problem is, we're not getting the vector itself. We're just getting its copy. To fix this, I decided to get the vector of enemies instead and check the bullet collision in the player class. Let's test it. Oh yeah. Now let's make the hitboxes smaller to make the game harder. Here's the current hitbox, and here's the hitbox after we change it. And now the bullets are going right between them. To keep things organized, I added the enemy manager class, which brought back the problem we had earlier with the vectors. We could fix this problem by rewriting the whole project, or we could simply do this. I asked the people on Discord if it's okay to do this, and most of them said, it depends. I'll take that as a yes. One thing I noticed in the original game is that the more enemies you kill, the faster they become. So let's add that as well. First I made a new variable which will define the current speed of the enemies. And here we reduce it by the number of enemies killed. Ok, let's test it. Ok, they're getting faster. 
Um, why did it stop? It turns out I forgot the limit to reduction and our move pause variable kept decreasing after zero. But since it's an unsigned variable, it went back to this number making the enemy super slow. I fixed it by using the max function. And now it's working correctly. Now let's make the enemy shoot. I decided to store the enemy bullets in the enemy manager class. We're gonna iterate through the enemy's vector and randomly decide if the enemy shoots a bullet or not. Here we're moving the bullets down, and here we're deleting the bullets that are outside the screen. And it's working! Oh, you don't see it? That's because we're not drawing the bullets, you silly cookie! Here we go, let's see. Oh wow. Yeah, I think we should lower the probability of shooting. Okay, that's better. Now we're gonna add more types of enemies. Here are the sprites. I also colored them because why not? The enemies now have a new variable that defines their type. We're also gonna store the textures of the enemies in an array. Why don't you just put all the images of the enemies into one texture and draw them separately using a sprite? Yeah, I know this may look bad, but it will be useful when we start adding animations. Hmm, we'll see. Here we're changing the texture based on the enemy's type. Wow, this looks pretty. But even though they look different, there's absolutely no difference between them. And I'm talking about the original. So we're finished with the enemies. Now let's add winning and losing conditions. We're gonna start with losing so I added this variable for the player. Here we're checking to see if we hit the enemy bullet or not. But the player can also lose if the enemies reach the bottom of the screen so I added this function that checks for that. And if one of these conditions is true, we're gonna restart the game. Now we can die from bullets, and if the enemies reach the player, the game restarts. Cool, now let's add winning. I made a new variable that will store the current level, and once we kill all the enemies, we're gonna increase the level by 1 and restart the game. We'll also display the current level on the screen using the draw text function. Technically, we're not changing anything except this text. We can just leave it like that and no one will notice a thing. Of course, we're not doing that. We're gonna increase the difficulty after each level. The enemies will become faster and have a higher chance of shooting. And to add some variety, I also made different levels. We're gonna store them as text and convert each character into an enemy. And once the player finishes the last level, we'll switch between the last two levels and keep increasing the difficulty. You know what, screw it. Oh yes! It's working! Okay, we're done with the gameplay part. But before we start making it pretty, we're gonna do one extra step, which is... In the original, there's a UFO flying at the top. And if you destroy it, you get 200 points. Wow, what an amazing reward. So I decided that in my game, if you destroy it, you'll get an actual, useful reward. And that's power-ups. Our UFO will have a timer, and when that timer reaches zero, we'll restart it, change the UFO's position, and set the dead variable to zero. While it's alive, it'll move from right to left. We're also checking the collision with the bullet to make sure the player can destroy it. Let's test it. What? I forgot to call the function. Again. Alright, now let's add power-ups. There'll be three of them. The first will give us a shield. The second will increase our reload speed. And the third one will give us the ability to shoot three bullets at once. To make things easier, I made a new struct for power-ups. Since we're not deleting our UFO object, we'll store the power-ups in it. The power-ups behave the same way the bullets do, so I don't think I need to explain that. Once they touch the player, we're gonna delete them. They're useless for now, but at least they exist. To make them useful, I made a new variable which will store the player's current power. When we have the shield power and we get hit by a bullet, we'll lose the shield instead of dying. Here we're increasing the reload speed when we have the second power, and shooting more bullets when we have the third. And to make the testing easier, I made this temporary variable. Instead of creating power-ups with random types, they're gonna appear in order. Here's the first power-up. As you can see, we didn't die. Here's the second power-up. Oh yeah! And here's the third power-up. Everything seems to be working. Once I was done with the power-ups, I wrote about them on my Patreon page. And one person suggested adding negative power-ups. Or should I say power downs? Get it? Get it? Anyway, one of his suggestions was to add mirrored controls. And that's what I did. If you pick up this power down, it'll start moving left when you press the right button and vice versa. After that, I decided to add some variety to the enemies. First, I added health. They're gonna have different health based on their type. And we're gonna reduce it once they get hit. Now instead of checking the dead variable, we'll check to see if their health is zero. As you can see, some of them are dying from one bullet, while others from two. The next thing we're gonna change is shooting. Instead of shooting one bullet, I want them to shoot two or even three bullets depending on their type. 
the bullets now have a direction in which they're gonna move. I also made an update function for them to keep things organized. And to make sure we don't get any bugs, we're gonna store the real coordinates in new variables and convert them to integer values. And here's the new shooting function. As you can see, they're shooting different numbers of bullets. The last thing I wanna change is the movement of the enemies. Right now they're moving like this. But I want them to move like this. And to make that happen, I changed the type of our direction variable. 0 means the enemy moves down, minus 1 means it moves left, and 1 means it moves right. Here we start moving the enemy down once it reaches the edge. Here we're moving it horizontally, and here we're moving it down until it reaches the next throw. Let's increase their speed for demonstration. Oh yeah, this is so much better. It's time for the final step. The first thing we're gonna add is the background. Either the space because it's called Space Invaders. Here we're loading the image, and here we're drawing that image on the screen. Alright, now let's work on the player. I drew 5 different versions of the player to show its current power. And we'll cut the white sprite out of the texture using the texture rect function. Now the player looks different when we pick up the power up. Then I drew this explosion animation for the player's death. For the animations, we're gonna use the animation class from the Mario project. We'll show the explosion when the player dies or loses the shield. Perfect. Now let's work on the enemies. Here are their animations. And now instead of a vector of enemy textures, we have a vector of animations. Since the enemies move faster the more we kill them, we're gonna change their frames based on their current speed. They should also appear white for a few frames after we hit them, so I made this timer. And here we're changing their color. Alright, it's working. I wonder what happens when they start moving fast. This is so bad. I love it. Now I wanna change their bullet because look at this. So awful. Let's fix it. You might be wondering what the hell this is. And no, we're not gonna animate it. Instead, we're gonna get the previous coordinates of the bullet. And we're gonna draw the tail of the bullet by using those coordinates. Look at that. So beautiful. Then I added a glowing animation for the power-ups. I don't think I need to explain the code here. Now let's change the UFO. I also added this little dancing alien which most people thought was a rabbit. It's not a rabbit. Those are antennae. Okay, he's about to show up. There he is. That was good. We're almost done. We just need to add the game over screen and the next level transition. We'll just throw a text on the screen when we lose on when we're transitioning into the next level. We also won't draw the enemies and the UFO when the player dies. Let's try losing. Now let's try winning. Very good. The last thing I want to add is a power up bar to let the player know the duration of the power up. Here we're drawing the borders, here we're drawing the bar itself, and here we're changing its color based on the current power. Come on, come on! Yes! We finished this game! Damn, that was hard. Anyway, the code is in the description. I want to say big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, especially Thunderdome. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord server and our subreddit. And be sure to like and subscribe. Oh, by the way, 